Okay. Hello, guys. All right. Now let's talk a little bit about seeing magical creatures here on the way to 5D. Then you're going to you're going to start seeing magical creatures, and we've talked about that before. Now, it's not that the magical creatures left or were gone. It's kind of like uh, your belief systems uh, made it so that you don't see them anymore. Plus, humans dropped to a vibrational level that was outside uh, the vibrational range that most magical creatures set on. Which, uh, there's uh, tons of them in the fifth dimension, of course. Almost all of them uh, could live in the fifth dimension. And there are quite a few of them that can live in the fourth dimension. Some can be in the higher realms of the third dimension. But even if they are in the third dimension or the uh, low levels of 4D, if you don't believe that they exist, you're not going to see them even if you are within range of them. So you have to believe that they're there first. So once you are open to that they exist, uh, then you've got to understand that most of the ones that you're aware of, the stories that you've heard of, like fairies, gnomes, elves, unicorns, dragons, werewolves, vampires, those are like some quick basic ones that you've heard of in fairy tales. Even the ones that you've heard of, you have been told, excuse me, you've been told that they are a certain way and that's what you've heard and so a lot of people, that's what they expect to see. And most of those stories have been so messed with <laughs> that they are so not the way that these beings really are that that also leads to problems when you're looking for them. Because if you believe that a fairy is looks like Tinkerbell, then you're going to miss most of the fairies. Because uh, can they look like uh, and Tinkerbell, sure, they can look like Tinkerbell, but that's just one thing that they can be. Uh, fairies are huge shapeshifters, huge shapeshifters, and they're like really, really into um, practical jokes. But they are practical jokes from the standpoint of like a, a 4D, 5D practical joke in a world where um, there's physicality, because fairies are big into physicality, but they're also into physicality where uh, death is no big deal, that that's just like changing clothes. So I know that, that it's a big deal. They love practical jokes, but they're, they might find their practical jokes really funny that you would not think were funny. Uh, at all, which is as people dropped into fear, this is where the cutoff between fairies and humans um, got to be really big because fairies got to be known as uh, really bad. And as humans dropped into fear and anger and their belief systems got to be really big into worrying about death and death being final um, back in, when those things started happening then the fairies practical jokes which led to the equivalent of a death um, then that's when fairies turned in from something magical and fun to something really really not not fun at all because fairies are very likely to like be playing with a human. They love humans. They love playing with humans. And they would do things like they would uh, be walking and playing along with a human and make it look like there was a bridge across this, this big, deep gorge. And then the human would step out thinking that they were stepping onto a bridge and there really was no bridge. And the human would fall 200 feet to their death. Now, in the 4th 
fourth dimension, in the high fourth dimension of the fifth dimension, usually what would happen is the, the human would, of course, sprout wings or instantly float or even if they didn't catch it in time, they might fall and die but immediately be able to bring their body back to life uh, because that's the way it is in the fifth dimension or the fourth dimension in the higher levels and everybody would laugh it off and that'd be the end of it but as the belief system started to change <clears throat> and people became afraid of death and um, really they were afraid of death then something like that was no longer amusing and somebody would die and they'd stay dead and of course then be, then uh, fairies became something to fear so their practical jokes were no longer amusing but this happened over, over a long time of course so just to be just to let you know the fairies haven't changed any they still love practical jokes and they still are really, really big shapeshifters. So they can be a little teeny, tiny, winged, um, female, humanoid buzzing around your face. Or they could look like a giant floating skyscraper. Uh, I mean, they literally can be anything. They can look like anything, sound like anything. Um, yeah, so why they ended up being the, the most, the most likely picture of a fairy being a little female winged, uh, character, I'm not exactly sure why those stories are the ones that stuck around the most, um, and I haven't gone to look, so I'm not sure, but, um, yeah, they love to fly, though. That's very, very common, and they love wings, so very, very likely to be uh, winged characters. They do tend to uh, like to be small because they are, uh, you know, they like practical jokes. So being small, they can get information on people and sneak up and uh, very big at sneaking in a little and then, boo, you know, scaring people. Uh, you turn around and it's a four-headed demon dog or something like that and they go boo and then they could zoom right down into the little tiny female winged character I mean you never know what a fairy's gonna do I just love fairies uh, their vibration is what they're known for when you get into magical creature land um, there's quite a few of them that can shapeshift as you will be able to too in the fifth dimension uh, shapeshifting is very common but there are a great number of uh, magical creatures that just don't want to. It's not that they can't. Anybody in the fifth dimension can shapeshift at will. It's just that a lot of creatures, they have their form that they want to uh, stay in, and they stay in that form. Shapeshifting is just not of interest to them. It's not what they want to do. It's not that they can't. It's just that that's just not their thing. They don't want to. Um, a lot of humans, whenever they get to fifth dimension, are big into shape shifting. Uh, they do that. Uh, there are quite a few humans that shape shift. So don't be surprised about that. Now, when you're getting into magical creatures, I think the number one, of course, is people have an idea of what they're looking for. You will be much better served if you take and throw out all those ideas of what you're looking for. So instead of looking for a uh, fairy, or looking for a elf, or looking for a fill in the blank, if you'll take that out of your mind and just be open to meet any magical creature or any alien altogether, uh, then you will probably have better luck. Um, with meeting them. Also, if you're... Okay, magical creatures are the vibrationally, you will match them faster and closer and easier through energy that is more... Well, it's more magical and it's more chaotic 
It's not organized. Magic is not going to be organized in the way that you, whoops, in the way that you think uh, of energy. In your mind, energy is organized if it looks like this, certain way. And magic uh, does not fit into that organized um, energy that you're used to, your scientific, logical thinking um, energy patterns. So magic would be would look at you look to you much more chaotic, like chaos. Okay. So if you are a kind of a logical, controlled, organized, scientific thinker then you're going to have a harder time uh, meeting, seeing, finding magical creatures. If you're more of a free spirit, uh, non-organized, more open for anything and everything to show up, if you uh, prefer less organization rather than more organization, then you'll be you'll lean more towards being able to see these magical creatures. Someone that's more organized and scientific and rational, I guess, more thinking, you'll more likely, you'll be the ones that, who you'll meet first will probably be aliens. And they'll probably be aliens more on the side of the geckos. Geckos are the most organized of all of those higher vibrations that are in the fourth dimension. So you'll probably meet them first. The pigeons, much more, um, uh, they definitely head more towards magic because they use more uh, magic in their belief systems, in their worlds. Uh, geckos have no magic, very organized, very rigid, very uh, scientific, by the book, thinking. So they're very much at this end over here, and the opposite end are magical creatures, and in between are the pigeons. And they are in the fourth dimension as well, but they are, uh, they have a little bit of magic, uh, as well as, you know, theoretical scientific thinking. And then magical creatures all the way at the end, and they are very non-scientific. Um, they move way, way too fast. Their energies are way too fast. It's not that you couldn't logically explain all of it. It could all be explained. All magic can be scientifically explained. It's just that it moves so fast and nobody does it. Um, if you have to stop and think about it, then you can't get magic done. Magic has to be done instinctually. If you are over there on this end... Um, open yourself up first to being okay with uh, meeting aliens. Um, allow them in. There's nothing wrong. There's some wonderful gecko aliens that you would enjoy visiting with. Um, just because the there are geckos and pigeons in the fourth dimension, and just because you don't want to stay there, doesn't mean you can't um, meet and talk to them. Uh, you don't have to be afraid of any of these beings. Whenever you go into this state, knowing that you're a god and you've got control over everything, they can't touch you. Uh, the second you lose fear of them and you take your power, you don't. You haven't given it to anybody. You're not praying to anybody. You're not relying on anybody. No other god. You own the fact that you run things. You're god. You're in control of your creationary process. And no one can control that, take it away from you, except you're the one that handles it. Once you've got that belief system firmly in hand, you can go anywhere throughout all of the game and you'll be perfectly fine. Where you will have trouble is if they pop in front of you and you instantly go, Oh my gosh, they're better than me. They're stronger than me. They can... They've got me. Whenever you do that, now you've given them the power. You've given them over your power, and now they they can do what they want. Um, yeah, and you, you're allowed to be startled, by the way. Startled is not the same as, 
you know, falling to your knees and being in total fear. You can be startled because of the way they look or the fact that they showed up out of the blue. You're allowed to do that. It's not going to um, send you into their control at all. That's totally, yeah. And you can know that. You expect that. Expect that your body suit that you are in, if something shows up right in front of you, your body suit is going to be shocked and shaken. So whenever it happens, then just give yourself a little, a few seconds and take a deep breath and uh, really laugh and calm your skin suit down and say, yeah, yeah, and then just talk to these guys. Um, that's all you got to do is just talk to them. Uh, just talk to them. Just relax. Talk to them. So if you're more on the scientific end, if you're more of a logic thinker, you're probably going to run into an alien first. If you're kind of a free-loving, not organized, um, whimsical type person anyway, then you're probably going to see a magical creature first. But just remember, there are more magical creatures and aliens than you could possibly even begin to imagine. All right? If you'll just be open to whoever, whatever shows up, you are likely to meet a lot more beings than if you decide that this is what they're supposed to be and this is what you want to experience because then you're calling on a very small um, entity or a small, very small group of entities. If you're open to whoever, then you'll be absolutely shocked and amazed at who shows up. Um and when they show up. Okay? So, yeah. I think that's all I wanted to say in this video. So, you have any questions about drawing in or calling on or anything like that, you can also um, call in if you want to talk to Jehovah God, Mary, um, any of the angels, any of the demons for that matter. You do that the same way, very objectively. If you'd like to have a conversation, desk jockey, if you want to have a conversation with Jehovah God, uh, be sure if you do um, want to talk to Jehovah God, learn from me, be sure and show up in male form, not female. He won't, he won't talk to females. So be sure to show up in female form. To talk, I mean, male form to talk to him. Uh, otherwise, he won't pay any attention. But when you do that, you cannot do it from the standpoint that you're calling in a ooh, ah, ooh, God. You've got to call on these beings on an even, even playing field. That you've got questions, you've got curiosities, you certainly can call on and talk to any of them. The second you hit your knees or, or like this, oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, you've given away your power, then you probably won't see them anymore. Um, they'll disappear probably instantly because they'll take over the show. Um, if you run the show as an equal, then you've got just as, I mean, you're, it's just as easy to uh, uh, have a conversation with uh, the angel Gabriel as it is to talk to a fairy just as easy. It's the same basic concept. Uh, it's all about you understanding that we're all a part of the all that is and um, you're simply having a conversation with another part of the all that is. That That's it. Okay, so if you have any questions about this concept or this um, video, just write the question below, question or comments. And uh, yeah, that's it for this one. I love you guys so much, huge hugs, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.